So these aren't the seven most important albums ever. I really just wanted to make a list of albums that were different for a variety of reasons that sort of highlight some of the different sections throughout hip hop. And some of the criteria that I used was impact, influence, but also uniqueness within the music and how it has aged over time. But you'll see that as the list unravels. So the first album I wanted to speak on, Six Feet Deep by The Gravediggers. Now this isn't the first horrorcore album. I think we can attribute more of the pioneers of horrorcore to the early Ghetto Boy stuff, but I mostly look at the early catalog of Ghetto Boy's shit as really hard gangster rap. To me, Six Feet Deep is about as goofy and as crazy and as psychotic as horrorcore ever got. This is not only a horrorcore classic, but it helped push subject matter forward. You have tracks like 1-800-Suicide where they're literally downplaying suicide. They have tracks like Diary of a Madman where each verse every MC is trying to defend themselves in a courtroom trying to justify these murders that they committed these very crazy and psychotic songs that opened up these whole new doors for subject matter I feel like people were talking about crazy shit in the early 90s but this just took it to a whole new level and after this album people weren't scared to put anything on wax and additionally I love the Wu-Tang touch to this it really shows that Wu-Tang wasn't all about drug rap and street shit they can get into some crazy psychotic shit and this is just another example of why Wu-Tang is probably the most important rap group ever which i think is a very nice touch to add to a classic and important album like this one next album i wanted to speak on the lifestyles of the poor and dangerous by big l this is the introduction of punchline rap and for me personally punchline rapping hasn't aged too well since this album came out in 95 and the reason for that is because punchline rapping is extremely hard to do and a lot of people just fall flat when they try to do it you can sound very corny and very silly if your punchlines aren't top level. It often feels like you're trying too hard and you're still falling flat, which makes you come off as an extremely underwhelming MC. Someone like Big Sean really struggles when it comes to this, in my opinion. So the reason why an album like Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous is so important and so crucial and such a standout, even as a 90s album, is because it really stood the test of time. Pretty much every single punchline that Big L's giving you here is hard, it's witty, it's clever. He doesn't fall flat on his face once, which I feel like is extremely hard to do when you're constantly doing punchlines. Lines like, I wasn't poor, I was po, I couldn't afford the OR. Those punchlines are extremely hard. Nowadays, modern rappers just focus on trying to be funny and clever because that's really all they can do. And we're not getting enough hard punchlines. And when I revisit an album like this, it still sounds very fresh and even new. And it's because people can't really reach this high level quality of punchline rapping. If you're looking for a good example of someone that actually was influenced by this and does it very well, your old Drug is a perfect example. His punchlines are very funny and clever and well put together he has to attribute this album for his entire style and even one of the most influential rappers ever Lil Wayne he's mostly known for his punchline rapping and while at times this sounds great this might be a hot take but I would take Big L's punchlines over Lil Wayne's punchlines any day and with how important influential and impactful Lil Wayne is the fact that the style of rapping which he's attributed to the most came out in this Big L 95 album it really shows why it's so important and on top of that this album is better than any Wayne album and it's really a testament to show that when it comes to the most important rappers ever, Big O's name isn't brought up enough because Impact goes under the radar slightly just because his style of rapping is extremely hard to pull off well. Next up, I wanted to speak on the Black Album by Jay-Z. Now, I don't even consider myself to be the biggest Jay-Z fan. I wouldn't even consider myself to be the biggest fan of this album. But it's important for us as rap fans to kind of take a step back and be able to appreciate why something is so important, even if we can't fully appreciate it out of enjoyment. But I do enjoy this album quite a bit. Probably just don't love it as much as everybody else does. But I can't take away how important and crucial this album was for hip hop. Not only did this album help continue to push hip hop forward in the early 2000s, the years 03 and 04 were very important. Albums like Get Richard Die Trying, The Black Album, The Love Below, The College Trap, all those albums continue to move hip hop forward throughout the early 2000s sonically. But there's something that this album has that differentiates itself from all the other albums listed. And that's the fact that this motherfucker freestyled this shit. Up until this point, it was not a cool thing for you to freestyle your own shit. Throughout the 90s and still into the early 2000s, it was all about your pen game. It was all about you writing your own shit and how 
high level of a lyricist you were. And you could easily be looked at as a joke if you didn't write down your own shit because people could tell through your rhymes. But if you listen to the Black album and how great the rapping is, you can't tell he freestyled this shit. And the fact that he came out and said, yeah, I freestyled this shit, someone as respected both lyrically, commercially, pretty much every facet of rap. As JC, the fact that he came out and said that was so crucial. After this album, literally every MC started to freestyle their shit. And kind of like I said with the whole lifestyles of the poor and dangerous and the fact that people couldn't match Big L's greatness, I don't think people could match JZ's greatness. A lot of rappers that freestyle their own shit, you can tell they freestyle their own shit because it's very lazy, it's very dry, and they're hardly giving you any substance. The Black Album does do all those things. I constantly feel like this is one of the most important modern rap albums and even though people appreciate it for how good it is i don't think people fully give its appreciation when it comes to how important this is this album pretty much changed songwriting and rap for decades to come and even to this day people still take pride in how well they can rhyme by only freestyling a lot of that is attributed to what jay-z did in the black album so on to the next album on my list operation doomsday by mf doom now to me this album is the underground equivalent to paid in full in the sense that to me this was the major blueprint when it came to lyricism for the underground what rakim did with paid in full in the mainstream i think mf doom did a lot of that for the underground with this album not only in the subject matter with the really goofy things mf doom would talk about which underground rappers would just continue to explore onto the 2000s and even throughout this decade but also the flow and the delivery it really seemed like mf doom just set the tone for what a delivery and the flow would sound like for a lot Lot of rappers throughout the underground i don't think there's a more important underground figure for rap than mf doom and it's interesting because i don't think the underground necessarily had to fall in love with the off-kilter flow that mf doom pioneered but it's just what they cater to it seems like the underground really has a stigma for you having to sound completely different from the next guy and mf doom did that to a whole new level with him being compared to anyone once this album came out so the next album on my list LP's Fantastic Damage. Now this is easily the most underground and independent album from my entire list and I could have easily picked Company Flow's Fun Crusher Plus which is constantly hailed as probably the most important work that LP's ever been involved in but I feel like this album also deserves a lot of attention that it doesn't currently receive. I could easily speak on the importance of this album through the lyricism that LP portrays and his style really just can't be replicated, how complex it is, how much theft there is to this shit and the subject matter that is very much so Socially conscious there's a lot going on here lyrically that could alone show how great this album is but i can just speak on the music alone and just focus on the production to show just how important and crucial this album is to hip-hop so before i started listening to lp i was really big into public enemy i loved their loud ass beats i was just a huge bomb squad fan nobody was coming close to the shit that bomb squad was doing throughout the 80s and even throughout the 90s there were great producers doing their own shit but the lane that the bomb squad set for themselves, nobody was touching. And eventually I listened to this album and I dig deeper throughout LP's work and it really seemed like the bomb squad, but just on steroids. To me, LP easily mirrored all of the crazy, loud experimentation that bomb squad portrayed throughout their beats. And LP has said that he's very much influenced by the bomb squad, but to me, he takes it to a whole nother level that I don't even think the bomb squad took it to. And it's great that we could have an album like this that isn't important so much because of its impact and influence. It's more important just based on the fact that it's such a testament to what hip hop is capable of. To me, Fantastic Damage is an album that will forever be in its own playing field and its importance will continue to grow because it seems like not a lot of albums create their whole entire lane for an artist and nobody else is there with them to me the bomb squad did that for so many years where they were in their own lane and nobody else was with them and then lp came through and just took it to a whole nother level next album i wanted to speak on the Great Adventures of Slick Rick by Slick Rick. Now, a lot of people consider this to be the introduction of storytelling. And while I am a firm believer that pretty much any song tells a story, even if you're speaking about complete bullshit, if you're trying to communicate some form of message towards the listener, you're pretty much telling a story, no matter how minimal it is. But if we take all the technicality out of it and we really try to pinpoint when someone took storytelling to its full extent throughout an entire album, this can very well be contributed to its start. And one of the things about storytelling is that I feel like a lot of rappers want to be known for their one-liners and their quotables and they want their one-liners to be constantly repeated over time. And when you focus on storytelling, that might be a little bit of a drawback because within these Slick Rick verses, you might not get one great quotable 
whole by itself, you more so have to take in the entire verse and the entire story to fully appreciate. The fact that Slick Rick was able to do this and able to do this so well and, and have it be recognized so much, I feel like this opened the door for Biggie and Nas to elevate their storytelling and not be afraid to fully engage in storytelling, even though if it might take some of the drawbacks that an MC might want, like constantly getting their quotables repeated and so forth. And I revisited this album right before this video and it still sounds very lush. I love the stories. It's not just the stories that Slick Rick creates that are great. It's the characters that he portrays that constantly makes you want to come forward. It's a very fun album, very clever. And when you talk about the greatest storytellers ever, Slick Rick has to be at the top of the list, I think. And this album is a testament why. I don't think that storytelling would become such a huge part of what it means to be a lyricist if it wasn't for this album. Now, the last album I wanted to speak on, I do think is the most important rap album of all time. And that is Paid in Full by Eric B and Rakim. I don't think an album can be more influential than this. When you introduce an entire format of rapping that becomes the most important measuring stick, I guess, for trying to calculate how great an MC is, I don't see how you can become more influential than that. Introducing lyricism to hip hop is probably the most impactful thing that anyone could ever do. If you are a lyricist or take pride in your pen game, you have this album to think. This is the kind of album where 30 years from now, kids are gonna pick up their pen and start writing shit. If they don't go all the way back to the 80s and they still want to be lyricist, but don't go all the way back to Rakim, they're still gonna be influenced by him because Rakim influenced whoever these kids are gonna be influenced by to be a lyricist. Rakim was the first lyricist after this album. Everybody was changing the way they wrote rhymes. Again, kind of like Jay-Z with the Black album. The way that album completely changed the way people approach songwriting when it came to rap. Rakim did that with Paid in Full, but times 10. Everybody expanded on their vocabulary after this album. Everybody started using multisyllables after this album. Never has a rap performance through an entire album has had such an impact and such a change to what we consider to be good rapping. And at the end of the day, if you want to know what it means to have a great rapping performance, a lot of that can be attributed to and compared to paid in full. And when your album is a testimony to what quality is and to what other people are gonna be compared to, and people can listen to rap throughout each decade and see how people built upon the foundation that Rakim did, no album is more important than this. The only album that I think comes close is Straight Outta Compton, just because gangster rap is such a huge part of not only rap, music but also the culture in itself but even with that i still think paid in full is the most important rap album of all time but that's all i gotta say would love to know your thoughts please let me know in the comments down below please like please subscribe please share and i'll be with y'all very soon all right peace